Here we have two of the Asher McLaren Arturo Line wheels, which Asher team sent here for test and review. So let's check if the hype around those after a few weeks of driving is as high as many claim. For beginning, this is not my first contact with the models as I covered those well before they come on the market and then I drove them several times in different expo editions getting sweet taste each time but let's see if the pro model can really beat my previous experiences from other top wheels I have around. Let's cover first quickly the features and then I will compare it objectively and subjectively against some other great options so you can get the full picture. The structure is the same as the original McLaren model they built for the Rio GT4 and I am not going to argue with the McLaren technicians who approve it so let's say if they are happy, I am happy too. In 300mm diameter is built like a tank in thick aluminum body with absolutely zero flex. The reason I opened the case was to attach my OMP extension as 3 of the 6 holes on the back are threaded and 3 not for different mounting solutions which I like a lot. It gives that extra choice for the different quick releases we have those days on the market and in simple 5 minute procedure taking few bolts front and back with the provided tools is quite easy job. The rubber grips have medium thickness and comfortable with gloves but the molding process left that harsh line of thin rubber which I can definitely feel on my skin without gloves and even if it's not too uncomfortable in driving I am curious how McLaren team who looks like are chasing perfection let that slip and didn't push Asher to do better which is definitely possible. Basically that's the only problem I personally have with those wheels and hope they will find a way to improve the molding process. Moving on the back there are 4 magnetic shifters with very interesting placement of the plates which must be the best in terms of feeling and comfort. As I've said in another video, Martin is very proud with those and I personally have to agree with him. With the ball bearing and the pivot points have been tested for 2 million cycles without any change in feeling and tolerance. And on the bottom dual clutch system which can be used as brake and throttle for those who need that feature. In front are 14 of the nicest button in terms of feeling and look. That's definitely a subjective statement but those button caps are very sexy as the light underneath pass only through the symbols which for me is the most beautiful look aesthetically speaking. There are also tons of options to choose from different symbols and replacing the caps just takes few minutes. Some people say it's not as easy to replace those as the simple stickers we find in different wheels but I have to disagree with that. If taking four scrolls we call that work, something must be very wrong with us. For that clean look I will personally do an hour work and this takes just three minutes. The feeling in action with those is very sweet with that spring load and tactile click at the end. I won't call them the best of the best but top three for sure. Again subjectively expressing my personal taste. Two seven way switches in very convenient place for comfortable work, four very stiff thumb rotor encoders with grippy shape which sometimes allow me to hit precisely one input at a time and sometimes two. That's the case with stiff encoders and small knobs. Just to overcome the stiff threshold sometimes I hit two inputs. And lastly there are those two position switches which can be set as continuous inputs as well. The idea here is to have fixed position for all the different settings which have positive and negative value like brake bias, TC, ABS, engine map and so on and once you choose the settings you want to change you can just map two buttons for example and adjust the values. As this model comes with 4.3 vocal screen and Asher is partnering with Dimitriadis who is the co-founder of Lovely Dashboard there are some really cool features which are very very well explained from the engineer. But in order the dashboard to know what's going on you need to hit one of these buttons. So when I hit one of these buttons it shows up. Let me zoom in so you guys can 
actually see you can see that it says in it you can find that video in the description and give some love to Dimitriadis who is doing incredible work not just for the Artura but for the entire community that being said the last feature are the LED lights with ready profile in sim hub which as Martin said for maybe 10 or 20 cars in iRacing we measured with Motec the perfect um, shift time per gear and we programmed the ref lights to it so for example if you're driving the Porsche Cup car around the Nordschleife you've got for each single gear the perfect shift at time that makes however as SimHub gave us all the freedom, Daniel Newman have created profile for this beauty too, which I want to discuss with you in separate video and test all the promises he gave for his work. So, there is no question Martin Asher have created incredible will, which have to be the case after so many years in the business, plus being also active competitive sim driver, but is this the best will I ever had in my hands. Starting with direct comparison from similar price range and feature loaded will, so Opex Spectre is probably the strongest contender in that fight, but let's see what I like more and what less. What I like more about the Spectre is the 5 inch vocal screen, which makes actual difference visually if I want to pick quickly information. That size difference is definitely noticeable in use. Next super cool feature the soul pack guys created is few presets of the color button lightning and the dash pages which with single click totally change the look of the wheel. In terms of build quality both models are tight with similar comfort in the grips and both have the same molding imperfection. The ergonomics are also very tight but what I like more about the Artura is the feeling of the buttons and in colors in action and definitely the shifters which are I would say my favorite till now from all the other models I have tested before. And for sure those button laser graved caps for me personally are way better than stickers. What is possible through SimHub for both models else is unlimited but both have very cool presets from the producers and I have to call them even. The Spectre is also a bit more expensive so the Artura Pro wins here. I guess this is very close fight between those two with the Artura winning by small margin and becoming the new benchmark for my work in this channel but again both are top models and the biggest decision maker for you must be the aesthetics as they will both get the job done very well but one of those will make you happier just looking at it attached to your rig. However, if I put the cube controls in the mix, I have to admit nothing to this date beats the grip comfort from those interchangeable hands and I can argue that the new buttons of the XGT feels the best in action. The 5 inch screen is also an advantage of this model but somehow that plastic cover make it feel cheaper and that's why it's rated behind the Spectre and the Artura Pro. Now, those all are 1.5k wheels but how the winner compares to my favorite wheels under 1k with similar features. If you follow this channel for a while you know the Pokorni GTB is one of my favorite options on the market because of the price and versatility. We can get it ready or build it ourselves to save even more cash and also pair it with different rims and cover all the different needs. Still SimHub compatible and great quality build with almost the same feature and number of dials, buttons, rotary screens and LEDs. There are not so many shifters on the back, buttons and rotaries don't feel as defined in operation but still way cheaper and maybe can't beat those overall but if the price is the biggest factor GTB just kills. Then is the Sim Magic FX Pro which is very beautiful wheel but the lack of Sim Hub support kills it for many and the same is for the Moza top models. So all that being said here is my personal opinion about the new Asher wheels. I can call this probably the best wheel I tested till now and will be the new benchmark but that doesn't make it the perfect model ever produced. As I said before, the Spectra, Cube Control, Spokorne and even Sim Magic have something to add in some cases. I think there won't be ever the perfect model to cover everything but there will be model which will make you personally happy based on your needs and your personal taste. Talking for myself, one thing I want to see gone is 
is the McLaren logo, which doesn't sit very well aesthetically driving the GT3R. And other than that, and the molding imperfection is not the absolute winner, but for sure the overall winner from the rest I have around.